Servo motors are generally controlled by providing a signal that pulses. It goes high for a little while and then is low for quite a bit longer. Here, the width of the pulse is 1500 microseconds while the width of the interval or length of the interval is 20,000 microseconds. This is the signal most standard servos use for the center position. Since we're using continuous rotation servos, it's our stop signal. By making the pulse wider, we can tell the motors to move counterclockwise. By making the pulse even wider, we can make the motors turn even faster. The SM S4303R servos max out at a pulse width of 2000 microseconds, which corresponds to 70 rotations per minute, uh, at least according to the data sheet. Uh, to make the motors turn clockwise, we need to send a pulse width narrower than, narrower than uh, 1500 microseconds. Um, and in the opposite direction, these top out at 1000 microseconds, again at 70 RPM. This isn't the case with all servo motors. When I first started making videos for this course, I was using Parallax's uh, servo motors, which uh, take a, as a maximum input 1700 microseconds. And uh, to go the opposite direction, uh, max speed is 1300 microseconds. And this corresponds for these motors to 60 RPM. Parallax also makes a high speed continuous rotation servo which uh, goes much, much faster, 180 RPMs, with the same uh, range of pulse widths, 1700 as the max and 1300 as the minimum. To see how changing the pulse widths that are sent to your motors can be used to control your robot, change these numbers right here. If you're using the SM-S4303R servos, then change them to 2000 to begin with and see what happens. Does that make your mo robot move forward, backward, or turn left or right? Record your results. Next, change these numbers to 1000. Then, set one to 2000 and the other to 1000. And after you test that, Try 1000 and 2000. If you're using the parallax motors, do the same thing, just use 1700 to begin with, and then try 1300, and then try 1700 with 1300, and vice versa. Be sure to have external power supplied to your motors while conducting this experiment. If you just use the power supplied by your computer through the Arduino, the voltage and current won't be high enough to power the motors properly. They'll move, probably, but not as intended.